Jam fam, no, it is not Horror Nights Deja Vu. I am at Universal Studios Hollywood for opening night of their Halloween Horror Nights. We've got eight houses, three scare zones, two shows, and more. We're gonna check out as much as we can tonight, so let's get in there. And just like with Halloween Horror Nights out in Orlando, this is your scare warning, your content warning. If you're more of an oogie boogie and Mickey's not so scary Halloween party person, maybe this isn't the video for you. If you've got young ones, maybe this isn't the video for you because it's definitely gonna be a little bit creepy, a little bit spooky, and if you don't want spoilers, so there's your warning. Now I've never been to Halloween Horror Nights out here in Hollywood, but I'm super excited to check it out. They have eight different houses. Some of them are the same IP, like Last of Us and Stranger Things, but I've heard the houses are actually a little bit different. Some of them are completely different from what we saw in Orlando. They've got two different shows and the Terror Tram, which I'm super excited about. So. We are gonna head in there, but quick first, big thank you to Universal Studios Hollywood for inviting Mammoth Club out to check out opening event tonight. We've got tickets and Express Pass thanks to them, so we'll be checking out everything. Let's go, I can't wait. Halloween Horror Nights kicks off tonight. Night. I'm filming this September 7th and runs through Halloween night here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Just like in Orlando, it's a specialty ticketed event and there are add-ons like in Orlando, like Express Pass or Stay and Scream so you can maximize your time here. Halloween Horror Nights starts at 7 p.m. here in Hollywood. It closes at 1 a.m. on the weekdays, 2 a.m. on the weekend evenings. Also, y'all, there's one house here that the movie was so scary, I had to turn it off. So, good luck to me, I guess. <laughs> so we're coming in right at the start of opening night, so it's very chaotic right now. Definitely gonna recommend doing Stay and Scream, but uh, we're gonna make our way to a house here. Start getting scared. This is the toy scare zone, where evil toys have come to life. Now the unique thing about this park that I've talked about in videos that are not Halloween Horror Nights is how it's set up like a mall from the 80s and you have to go down a bunch of really tall escalators to get from the upper lot to the lower lot. And I've read online that if you start in the lower lot, that's usually less crowded because most people come in and just start at the houses that are in the upper lot. However, this year, Last of Us and Stranger Things, undeniably the two most popular houses of the event, are both in the lower lot. So they already had quite long lines from people doing Stay and Scream. So I think I'd recommend actually doing the upper lot houses first. However, we do have Express Pass, so we're headed to go knock out those first. Whew, I'm very excited to see how they're different. I loved both of these houses in Orlando. Super excited to see how they're different here. Just like at Universal Orlando, we are gonna be ranking all eight houses on a scale of how amazing they are. That includes how scary they are, how much fun they are, the theming, etc. But because Lil Boo is not as prominent of a figure here as he is out in Orlando, we're gonna be doing this on the Chucky scale. So how many Chucks does each house get? And just like in Orlando, we're starting with The Last of Us. The Last of Us house, I'm hearing titterings on not Twitter that the house is better here. But just like the one in Orlando, it is themed to the game, Last of Us, not the show. Game creator Neil Druckmann worked closely with the team. It's got a 180 minute wait right now. That's how popular this, this story is. Uh, we are gonna join up with Joel and Ellie and uh, try and endure and survive. So I'm excited to see it. I love The Last of Us House out in Orlando. It was my second favorite there. And I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Let's get in there. Hey, we need to lighten the mood. What is that? It's a joke book. No pun intended, volume two by Will Livingston. Uh -huh. What did the mermaid wear to her math class? Please don't. An algae bra. <laughs> <laughs> algae bra? Let's get going. Oh, I'll go first. I'm brave. Oh, I'm less brave. This is a nightmare, y'all. This one is so scary. Oh my god, I hate this. Oh my god, it's so much scarier! Oh, my God. 
Oh my god, the noise. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Thanks for the warning on the other side, guys. Oh my god, that was so scary. 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 Y'all, if I thought it was scary on the East Coast, a nightmare. I. 10 Chuckies, so scary, so good. That one was amazing, but oh. <laughs> Wow, wow, that is a way to kick the night off. That was fantastic and terrifying, truly. Next up, we are going into Exorcist Believer, which I ranked as the scariest house in Orlando, which who knows what's gonna happen this time, because Last of Us was scarier. Will this be scarier? Exorcist Believer, same thing as Orlando, based on the upcoming film, not the original Exorcist, but it does feature characters, Reagan's mother specifically, from the original Exorcist. <sighs> Here we go. The light of exorcism is one of the oldest human rituals. Every culture and every country for as far back as history has been recorded. There are many I regret volunteering to go first. I regret going first. Oh my God, it's so dark. I hate this. It's so dark. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. I can't see anything. Oh my God. into the first of the original houses this year, Holidays in Hell. And from what I hear is each room is a different month celebrating a holiday in hell. Easter Bunny got me so good. I'm gonna give that one an eight on the Chucky scale. Definitely scary, but also really fun theme. 
Taking a little snack break at Scoops Ahoy. They have transformed the ice cream stop here to theme to Stranger Things. And I got one of the specialties, the Eleven's Waffle Sunday. So if you remember in the show, when Eleven goes to live with Daddy Hopper, they make obscene waffle ice cream sundaes. So this is strawberry ice cream. It's got chocolate chips, jelly beans, mini M&Ms. Of course, it's topped with a waffle. Let's try it. Tastes like Buddy the Elf would like it. It's good saucer. It's a ton of candy. I don't need jelly beans on ice cream, I'll tell you that much. It's pretty simple, it's like what you expect flavor-wise, but it's fun. Definitely terrible. The last house down on the lower lot is Stranger Things, and it has a really long line, and it has a 40-minute wait for Express. So gonna come back down and knock that one out a little bit later. Headed back up now to do the Terror Tram, which is an icon here at Hollywood Horror Nights Hollywood. But I do wanna point out that some of the attractions do remain open at the event. Jurassic World, uh, Forbidden Journey, Transformers, Mummy, Simpsons, not Super Nintendo World, uh, but they should have pretty low wait times. And if you've paid for Express, it works on the rides as well. Now, I'm still gonna prioritize houses and the shows and the exclusive Halloween things, but it would be easy to knock out a few great attractions during the event if you maybe didn't wanna do all the houses or something. Now here at the Terror Tram, they take the studio tour and they make it terrifying, as the name might suggest. During the daytime, ooh, the greatest movie of all time. Um, during the daytime, the studio tram tour takes you through active, well, not now, movie sets. You get to go through Fast and the Furious Supercharge, Skull Island Kong, and learn how movies are made. But during horror nights, it becomes the terror tram. So they actually drop you off part of the way through the tram tour, and then you walk through it. And it's basically like a giant scare zone. This year's theme, the exterminators aka bugs. All right, well, I got kicked off. It's basically nightmare, it's tough to be a bug because they said the bugs are after us. A billion to one, a billion to one. It's literally, it's tough to be a bug, so let's go. Hello, Larry. <laughs> Hello, oh my God. Sprayed, oh. Then call the, the family will save me, I know it. This is outrageous. It's I a want carrot. to speak to your manager right now. Do you hear me? I am talking to you, Missy. What are you looking at? This is unacceptable. Unacceptable! Oh! Larry! Oh my I am literally being killed by a giant. <laughs> it's so meta. Yeah, girl. I'll follow you. Like for likes. Larry. Oh, hi, bug. Hello. So the theme of the exterminators is that they're trying to kill humans, and they have different kinds of humans, including a Karen and an influencer. It's very meta, but it was very funny and also terrifying because bugs. And um, I hear there's a certain psycho up ahead. Hello. Hello, how are you? Okay. Did you know insects on this planet outnumber humans a billion to one? Did you know insects on this planet outnumber humans a billion to one? I didn't. Humans don't stand a chance. I did know that because I've seen. Oh my god. We walked through War of the Worlds and now we're walking into Jupiter's Claim from Nope. Which I did just watch for the first time in preparation for this. Oh my god! Oh! Oh it's from it's from us. Oh!
Oh! Hello! Oh no! The power stops, that means the aliens are coming. Jupiter's claim and it's like part nope part us all terrifying that was awesome Terra Tram a must do a must do experience here at Hollywood that's definitely the most unique part of this experience so far and it was great walking through Hogsmeade right now definitely a little spooky scary gonna come back here in a little bit because the Death Eaters are out but for now weirdly you have to cut through Wizarding World to get to our next two houses those houses are Chucky, Ultimate Kill Count, and Universal Monsters Unmasked. They have both of these themes out in Universal Orlando, but as we're seeing, the houses tend to be a little bit different here. Chucky Ultimate Kill Count is really meta and funny. It, the theme is that Universal decided to make a Chucky house, and who else would you invite but Chucky himself? But he shows up and realizes they're not actually murdering anyone, and he decides to change things. Super excited to see this one. It's based more on the show on sci-fi, which I'm a big fan of, than it is the movies, and I want to play. Universal also usually does some kind of monsters themed house because they are the original home of the monsters, of course. But this year they've mixed it up and instead of using like Frankenstein's monster and Dracula and the Wolfman, they're using Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Invisible Man, and Phantom of the Opera. We've done quite a walk to get back here. I've seen the Hollywood Hills. There's a food stand back here and a beautiful crow man. I think Moira Rose would really enjoy this. Look at him. Ooh, the catacombs! How scary! Oh my god! Oh, I don't want to walk through this! No! No! Since we saw our house, lies the phantom's sections of these houses where I have no idea where I'm going and I can't see anything no. until a monster pops out. So all of their houses so far have been scarier. That said, I do think that's the least scary house of them all. There's a couple of like very clear sets and pieces to look through. So it's a very cool house, but I don't think I was as scared there as I was in the other ones I've done so far tonight. On the Chucky scale, I'm gonna give that one a 7.5. I like the characters, I like the costumes. There's some really cool set story moments, but still not as good as how I know. What I think is really cool about the houses here that are so different from the Orlando houses, I love the facades they build at the front of each house. Like it sets the story up. Some of them have had characters outside the house and it really like puts you into the mood versus going just kind of straight into the sound stage, which is what most of them are like at Orlando. Oh, you want to go inside the Want to play? Okay. Well, hello there, my beloved little 
Let's check the running Giant Chucky at the end is my favorite thing on the planet now. I love it. I wish it was a meet and greet. I laughed very hard, like ridiculous. Um, that's less scary than the Orlando version. I would say, as a fan of the show, once again, I liked being like, oh, that's that part, that's that part, and like recognizing characters and moments from the show. I don't remember Glenn, Chucky's non-binary child that he has with Tiffany being in the other one, but they were in this one. So I kind of like that, but overall that one's not my fave. I would give that one a five on the Chucky scale. Host Chucky, we're in Hogsmeade, where I hear some parcel tongue. And we're looking for the Death Eaters. Death Eater spotted. <laughs> Why did we let him lead us into like a trap, like a creepy corner? Dark alley. scarier in California. They kind of usher you down the back path, back way where Hagrid's would be, and the Death Eaters are like their own scare zone. <sighs> Should have brought my dark mark, I forgot. I will not make this mistake again. But you have to come see them, they're awesome. <laughs> Getting a little liquid courage for our next house up at the Dia de las Muertas section in the upper lot. It's this circular plaza here. It's got some different scare actor characters as well as fun music and a couple different food kiosks that have different margaritas and nachos and different snacks and drinks. I stopped by this margarita stand that has different frozen and on the rocks cocktails. My friend went to a booth that has different cocktails that come with candies on top. I'm really trying to hype myself up for the next house. I picked up the Smoky Cauldron Margarita made of mezcal, cucumber jalapeno, tequila, agave, lemon, passion fruit juice, dehydrated orange, and blood orange and cream served in this very cute blinky bloody margarita glass. P.S. It was really loud in here so I'm doing voiceover later. This was actually pretty good. Most of the time pre-made cocktails like this are too sweet for me. However, this one wasn't super sickly sweet. You could taste the smokiness of the mezcal. You could definitely taste the tequila. It was a little bit tart and refreshing. It was just what I needed for the next house. Y'all don't understand. In order to prepare for Halloween Horror Nights, I like to watch all of the content, all of the IP that sparks the shows and the houses and the scare zones. I watched two seasons of the Chucky TV show. I watched Nope. I watched, obviously, Stranger Things. But I tried to watch Evil Dead Rise. And I got so scared, I had to turn it off. So this house is terrifying to me. And knowing that these houses are already scarier than the ones at home, I'm petrified right now. No. We are confident.
guys, also, that was my least favorite house so far, and it's not because I was scared, because I actually think I was the least scared in that house of all of them. Just wasn't, I just wasn't feeling that one. I'm only giving it a four on the Chucky scale. That one I think you can skip if you have to pick one. The next house on our list, Monstrous, the Monsters of Latin America. The monsters are out and about. They are ready to get us. What's interesting about this one is the theme is different Latin American spooky folklore tales and your host is La Muerte, who is death. The first is the Mexican legend of Tualapuchi, which is a vampire witch that is a shapeshifter and lives amongst humans. Once a month, they must feast on blood or they will die. And while they can harm anyone, their victim of choice is infants. Ugh. We also must face La Lechuza, another Mexican legend. This is the story of a woman who was wronged and now seeks revenge by turning into a gigantic owl and murdering people. And lastly, the Venezuelan and Colombian legend of El Silbon, which tells the story of a young boy who kills and eats his father, and the El Silbon is his cursed soul wandering around looking for victims to add to his bag of bones. I have heard from some friends that have said this is the scariest house yet. So, buckle up, I guess. This grave is for you. Oh. <laughs> Prefer it wasn't. It's a lot of crying babies. Oh. My goodness. Oh my gosh, there's so much of the touch. So much of the touch. Touching dead things. Oh, that's a nightmare. Oh, ew, the dead pigs are <laughs> survived. Monstrous also dumps you out into El Terror de las Momias, which is a scare zone. Oh, oh, hello. Oh! The scare zones really aren't as spectacular as they are at Universal Orlando. Also, I'm kind of learning that, like. The highs are really high here and the lows are kind of low. Like that one, I'm only giving it four and a half Chuckies. I didn't think it was really scary at all. I don't know if I just didn't have a great run. Okay, of course I had a couple screams, but compared, wasn't my fave, wasn't my fave. I did like some of the uh, effects and the costumes more than the previous one, but, oh, hello. <laughs> Trying to walk through the, uh, I'm in another scare zone, clearly. Um, we are headed now to the Purge, Dangerous Waters. This is in the Water World Theater. How's it hanging, man? Any questions? What's your name? I'm David S. Pumpkins, man, and I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. Where are the skeletons? Doing their own thing. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by David A.S. Pumpkins. Not gonna lie, it does seem like we have forgotten what Tom Hanks looks like. Anyway, we are headed into The Purge, Dangerous Waters. This is in the Waterworld Theater, and it is an epic stunt show themed to The Purge. Hollywood just keeps surprising me. This is new this year. Uh, however, it happens a few times a night, so probably the later shows will be better. I would say to try and probably avoid the first one because it's not going to be dark yet. And I think to fully experience this, you're going to want complete darkness. But I'm excited to see what's in store. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the plot of The Purge, there are several, I believe five movies in the series. But basically, one night a year, all crime is legal, including murder. And a friendly reminder, if you've got Express Pass, that does include the shows, so you will have reserved seating and you don't have to wait in the long line. If you're not doing Express, I would get in line probably 30 minutes early. So another reason I know Express gets really expensive, but if you've only got one night at a party like this or at an event like this, it can really make a huge difference with getting through the houses. Most of the houses have had at least an hour, if not two, since we've been here, um, and the shows have long waits, so Express can really be a game changer if you only have one night. 
isn't my least favorite thing of the night anymore. That's the silver lining. I didn't, I didn't need to watch that. I don't need to watch that again. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of monologuing and not a lot of stunts. Also, it's a lot of stunt fighting though, kind of like Avengers Campus, but with fake blood. So for me, that was a no. For you, maybe it's a yes. But for me, I would not spend time in this amphitheater unless it's to see Waterworld and, and I would instead use the 25 minutes to do another house or get a snack or ride a ride. That, that was a miss for me personally but you know what we got one house left and I'm hoping we save the best for last. Now we're walking through the toys scare zone again at night um, which is if your toys were nightmares so that's neat. A monkey. Ethan Hawke's nightmare character from the Black Phone was welcoming me into the Blumhouse behind the scenes experience. I'm gonna skip for this evening. It is a behind the scenes part show, part walkthrough experience. I know it features the Megan dolls, it features some costumes from Five Nights at Freddy's as well as some other Blumhouse films, but I only have about an hour of event time left and I still haven't done one, the Stranger Things house, and two, there's a Stranger Things themed bar here. It's not just one of the food kiosks like it is in Orlando, it's like they redid a whole bar with food and drinks and I really wanna check that out. So I'm gonna save the Blumhouse experience for when Max Allen and I do this event because we won't be doing Purge again, am I right? But that just goes to show you that even with Express Pass, there's no way to do every single thing at these events. There's just too much, which is a good and a bad thing. So you have to prioritize what you'd like to do. For me, houses are most important. I love eating and drinking themed things, so that's important too. And I would definitely put Terror Tram at the top of the list. Y'all, I am giddy about this. And earlier they had a line all the way down the stairs and it was really busy, but now it's like the last hour of the night and there's not really a line at all, at least not yet. And I can hear Eartha Kitt, which is a nod to what Victor Creel hears to pull him out of his Vecna funk. Oh my God, and there's a mixtape. Oh, my Stranger Things heart is so happy right now. This is so, so cool. Last year, this is where the weekend bar was, and I was so jealous of the people that got to come out for Horror Nights. Uh, but we had just started and didn't make sense to, to pay to fly out here. So I'm like feeling it being here tonight. I'm very excited to be here. Picked up some goodies from up here at the Stellar Bar, and I gotta tell y'all, the jams are in fact stellar. They're playing Metallica, they're playing 80s, they are crushing the Stranger Things playlist right now. Also, how cute is this Demogorgon pizza? It's just like a flowered out pepperoni pizza hot pocket situation, but I love it. Also had to get the HHN staple that is pizza fries. They don't do twisted taters on this coast, which is a huge knock against Hollywood, but we always love pizza fries, which are crinkle fries, marinara, cheese, and pepperoni. And then of course, all the Stranger Things cocktails are super duper sweet looking, but they're also really cool. I asked the bartender which she thought would be the least sweet of the Mind Flayer, the Upside Down, and the Surfer Boy, and she picked the Surfer Boy, 
which has tequila, melon liqueur, kiwi, lemonade, Sprite, and it's topped with cotton candy and a surfboard made of sugar. This literally sounds like my nightmare drink, but I will drink it for Stranger Things. First up, Demogorgon. Scary Flower Monster makes a tasty pizza dish. It's nothing super exciting taste-wise, but the presentation's adorable. The pastry crust is nice and fluffy. I wish there was more filling. I'm thinking the Surfer Boy pizza, which they do have here, although it has a different menu, is probably a better option as far as like taste-wise, but it's fun. Now let's try the pizza fry, which you know is gonna be a classic deliciousness. And lastly, the cocktail. Yeah, that truly is not a drink for Molly. My friend Taryn, who loves sweet drinks, is enjoying it thoroughly right now. I got it for the theming. It's the only one that didn't have blue curacao in it, but it does have melted cotton candy in it, so it's very sickly sweet. It's very sticky. There's a little tartness because of the uh, liqueur in it, the melon, and there's a little tartness because of the lemon, but it's really sweet. You can't really taste the tequila. These drinks are fun for theme, but too sweet for my taste. I will be sticking with beer when I come back to the Stiller Bar, which I will do because the vibes up here cannot be touched. Had the most delightful time up at the Stiller Bar. Now, they did just close it. I think they closed it at 12.30, so keep that in mind. They may close it a little bit early, so if you want to go up there, but, but truly there were very few people up there. I was only waited in a couple people line to get food and drinks. That was awesome, such a vibe. And now we head to our final house of the evening, Stranger Things 4, baby. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm assuming this one's gonna be different because every other house has been pretty different. Excited to see what we see. And I'm ready to face back now. Stranger Things 4 only has a 25 minute posted wait without Express. Last of Us is down to 40. So I definitely think if you're not gonna get Express, the last hour or so of the night is probably the best time to hit these houses. They have been the longest all night. Here we go. I am so excited. I just love that these houses are like going into the show. Like, I love this show so much. It means so much to me. Ooh! The theme song gets me so hyped. Oh my god, the clock. The clock is literally here. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! There wasn't as much of Vecna. Um, we got to see Nancy, which was cool, and a couple of the characters from the Eleven storyline at the Nina Project. I definitely don't think it was as scary as the one in Orlando. It's the second least scary house tonight. I think Chucky's the only thing less scary than that. 
I think on the Chucky scale, I'm gonna give it an eight, which is surprising even myself. It was great and I loved it and I love being a part of that story. And it's very, very well done. There is a lot of really cool set pieces like the Creel House facade, but I just didn't love it as much as the other one. And I feel like taking my personal love of Stranger Things out of it, I don't think that is the best house. So without further ado, we've got our two rankings. We've got our scary ranking and we've got our Chucky rating, which is our like overall. And I'm once again gonna caveat this that this is just based on my experience tonight. I may have gotten less scary or more scary runs than other people, but for our scary rankings from least scary to most scary are as follows. Number eight, the least scary house. Chucky, ultimate kill count. Number seven, Stranger Things 4. Number six, Evil Dead Rise. Number five, Monstrous, Monsters of Latin America. Number four, Universal Monsters Unmasked. Number three, Holidays in Hell. Number two, The Last of Us. And number one, once again, Exorcist Believer. But now how about those Chucky ratings? This is my rating for overall for the house. Incorporating how scary it was, but also how good was the theming? How fun was it? How just overall vibes for the house? And we had a much wider swing here than we did over in Universal Orlando. But starting from the bottom, Evil Dead Rise, then Monstrous, then Chucky Ultimate Kill Count, then Exorcist Believer, then Universal Monsters. Tied for our next spot, our second spot position, we've got Stranger Things 4 and Holidays in Hell, which means our number one, without a doubt for me tonight, was The Last of Us. You know what, we had a few minutes to spare, so with literally five minutes left of the event, jumped into the line at the Blumhouse behind the scenes. They're gonna open up the theater here shortly. I believe there's some creepy dolls waiting for me. Not sure what else. I guess the question will be, is this better than the Kung Fu Panda show? So Blumhouse is the horror producer behind a lot of movies, including The Exorcist Believer. Megan, Five Nights at Freddy's, The Purge. So that's what this is all about. And it looks like we're starting with some costumes, which makes sense, we're in Hollywood after all. And you know me, I love a movie prop. Like here's Ethan Hawke's absolute nightmare of an outfit from the black phone. Honestly, this is a hilarious joke. Welcome to the Blumhouse behind the screen. The show starts promptly once you're seated. We'll show you all the way anymore. The masters of horror. Welcome to the world of Blumhouse. Roll that clip. chance that I'm a ghost talking to you now because that Megan at the end got very close to me and I could be dead so that was cute I think that was definitely more worth a visit than the purge show especially if you like real movie props if you like any of those horror movies it's basically a big commercial for Blumhouse but the Megans are fun I think the Megan Horde Universal Orlando is more fun but if you're looking for like a sit down for a second especially if you express worth the stop once you've done everything else. Well, friends, that is a wrap on Halloween Horror Nights on the West Coast. I had so much fun checking out this event that I've never been to out here. Thank you so much again to Universal for inviting me out. I think there is a lot of fun to be had at this event. Some of the houses were so good. So many of them were so scary. I loved the Terror Tram. A great, great night. Can't wait to come back with Max and Alan. <sighs> I'm exhausted, but let me know which coast you're going to. Let me know what house you're most excited about. And in the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been Spooky. Bye!